It's August 1942, and in the capital of Iceland, King Edward waits patiently inside the war room overseeing preparations. Only recently, Edward asserted his royal prerogatives and established an absolute monarchy over Canada with the determination for his reign to end inside London unlike how it started. Then a man hurries into the room and speaks. The plans are ready, your majesty, just waiting on your command. Go ahead, Edward responds. Months of preparation have come to this moment. After enduring years of exile, unwavering excitement to reclaim their homeland fills the soldiers as they march into their convoys. The King is coming home. Hi, I'm Colonel Cam and welcome to part one of 22 years as the United Kingdom in Kaiser Redux. Hello, yes, welcome to a two-part series where I play as Canada and form the Imperial Federation over 22 years. Without further ado, please like and subscribe. A lot of time and effort goes into these videos and I'd really appreciate it if you just did one of those things. Anyway, let's get straight into the video. Anglo-French tensions. Great Depression. A breaking centre. What is that? Is it because we lost oh, the British Revolution? Divided nation, yep, Quebec and that, and then the British government in exile. Okay, there's a not terrible national spirit. Okay, this is pretty bad, but uh, the rest isn't too too terrible. Oh, sorry about my phone. We got a balance of power here. The exile government. So there's the Canadian government and the exile. Oh, sorry, yeah. All right, we'll we will uh leave that for now, and we'll see we'll see what we do there. But I wanna I wanna go down the. Assert royal pr pr prerogatives and go a new empire, right? It's gonna be good, it looks exciting. Now, if you are familiar with Kaiserreich law, we are actually the real United Kingdom with the monarch and everything, and we've been exiled to Canada from our homeland because of a revolution that's happened in our country. So well, our job is to get that back. Fall of Britain. It has been 11 long years since the collapse of the UK. One day soon though, we are going to get back and reclaim our homeland. Oh, our current situation, yes. Obviously, you guys can also read that. We're <laughs> not looking too good. Probably. I didn't read it. Essentially, the king is about to die, George V, and then Edward VIII is about to come in and everything is going to go to chaos. Oh, the death of King George V. The empire enters a state of mourning. The king's speech is now available. There we go. We can finally do our first focus. Here he is. The Prince of Wales will be crowned Canadian political lab, blah, blah, blah. The king's first address in 28 days. Well, it's actually going to be only 18 because we've already saved our 10 and... Edward's outfit. Oh, you can make him, you can, I'll put on my suit. Oh, look at him. There he is. He can change his outfit. That's pretty cool. Black Monday hits Canada. No. Oh, modify Great Depression. It's even worse. The Great Depression is even worse now. Okay, that's fine. We'll survive. The King's first address. Okay, so we don't see anything. I'm not sure if it matters too much, but uh, let's prepare the nation for war, right? We're going to take back our empire, our right, whole empire. Okay, here we go. We got all this stuff and we can't do these ones yet. So I'm just going to continue. And then there's the C7 bill here. Um, this is all industry, air force, navy, army, and taking back our land. Essentially, all we have to do to turn Canada into a de facto monarchy is to fail the C7 bill. The C7 bill is very important. It, it handles the policies of conscription, our military industry, our navy, our air force. It does all these industry military stuff. And what happens if we fail it is the king gets very angry and decides, nope, I'm determining my authority over this land and turns it into a monarchy. So that's what we need to do. And ensuring blah, blah, blah. Okay, we can reform it, urge the king to appoint more Canadians. The Senate can return, but the king's prerog prerogative choose who he wishes. Let's do this one. So the exile and government gets even more powerful and we get 100 political power. There we go. So if we look here now, there it is. And this will give us uh, more and more stability. What is, what is this? What does it happens each time? Let's pit. America is lost, they say, and we should look on our own first. Yeah, they're going to be on their own. I'm not going to... They're literally in a civil war. They're going to go into a civil war, okay? <laughs> not dealing with that. Did I just say that I wasn't going to deal with that? Well, I, d I wish I listened to myself here because uh, they will make a very big mistake when we decide to d intervene in the civil war later on. Okay, so we have two guys. We have a Canadian dude and a not Canadian dude. And people are worried but because the majority of the people in our army are Canadian that having a guy who is British leading our country would be bad. So... Is the Canadian? Yeah, we're gonna do the Canadian guy. We're not that evil. We get army experience gain plus ten percent organization. This is good, but then we lose five percent. That's fine. We've got half that. It's high enough. Like we're still in the exile influence, so it's not too bad. Um, Crown corporations. So we go build arms factories. Modify Great Depression. Get some of these. 
Metropole invasion preparations. Wait, is this everything? Oh my gosh, we have one for reclaiming our homeland. That's so good. Let's get it. Let's just get it straight away. Invasion penalty, negative 25%. Yeah, I'll take it. The federal election of 1936. Does it matter? The market liberals are... Well, it's always going to be Edward VIII, no matter what we do. I don't think it matters, but we're going to go market liberalism because it's already the most popular one. And when I did my test run, that is the one I went down and I was still able to go down for the a new empire, I think. Yeah, so, yep, we're doing that one. There he is, Mackenzie King, of course, he's still here. Can't get rid of the man. And this now, he's a king. Look, you can see the smoke moving. How good's that? Helping a loyal hand. Good. King Edward congratulates Mackenzie King. 10% stability. Anyway, here it is, the infamous C7 bill that I was talking about. All these decisions that I'm clicking that you're seeing on screen, not decisions, they are event decisions. Actually, they are decisions. Anyway, focus. The decisions I'm choosing do not actually matter. All that matters is if I choose to fail or pass it. And of course, we need it to fail. Voting begins on Bill C-7. With the debate on Bill C-7 now coming to a close, the House Speaker has begun to roll the call for voting to begin. Tensions are high, and failure by the government here would be catastrophic. The bill fails. Da 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 da. Okay. Oh, there we go. Bill C-7 killed in the Senate. Oh, and now the King, not particularly happy with the results of C-7, decided to, uh, well, assert his royal prerogatives. Whoa, has led to a vote of no confid confidence. The collapse of Mackenzie King's Liberal government. Yes, here we go. The royal power belongs to the king and he wishes to exercise his royal prerogatives. That's what we're looking for. So now we can finally unlock, yes, good. And then we go down to a new empire. Things are looking good. The government falls, scandalous, 10% towards the exile government. Assert royal prerogatives, the Welt Krieg, and the revolution that came in its aftermath has revealed the fatal weaknesses of liberalism. Now it is time to set aside frivolous potencies of equality and return power to the one divinely ordained to wield it, the king. Long live the king. There we go, 50 political power. We lose all this stuff, but the exile, this is getting pretty strong now. A new prime minister. Okay, so now this decision determines which of these three branches we go down, and we are going down to a new empire, so executive power will lie with the king alone. Now we're about to have a lot of new countries on our borders, and one of these countries we can take over very easily. That, that country is Alaska. Alaska decides it wants to be free, and then I say, no, no, you're not free, you uh, belong to the United Kingdom. Alaska's just broken free. Jeez. Okay, that's interesting, I haven't seen that before. His Majesty King Edward VIII has used his royal prerogative and dissolved the civilian government, turning Canada into a de facto absolute monarchy. This will mean for the wider our empire is yet to be seen. However, if one thing is to become clear, it's that the relationship between the Cana Canadian citizenry and the monarchy has been irrevocably changed. Beautiful. Now we should get autocracy. There it is. There's the autocracy. The status of Alaska. So what are we going to do about Alaska? An unexpected outcome is to come in the Americans over the Alaska, blah, blah, blah. We cannot have... Okay. The Canadians invade. Approach them. Ignore. Okay, we're going to approach them. They are, they are, they refuse. We can try and go to war with Alaska. The Alaskans have been foolish. Few star gracious offer. What are they looking like? They've got no divisions. Oh, uh, you know, I mean... Can I click on... Please, can I click on this? You know, it's not really every day that you get to get a free Alaska, is it? How long do I have before this event ends? 13 days, All right? Get over there, divisions. Canada, Claire's Warren. There we go. Alright, this guy will go in here. And in we go to Alaska. Emergency draft. Let's expand the secret police. What did I, you guys didn't see anything there. No, 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 you, no. Don't act like you saw. Anyway, it was finally time for the American Civil War. And there's a really cool event that we get in, in this war because we get to take more land from America. Would you believe it? We can seize New England. The American Civil War has begun. Yes, sir. There it is. Second of American Civil War begins. America in chaos. Okay, so now we have the new part of the focus tree. Chaos has overtaken our neighbors to the south, and even worse, the Socialist Party of America has proclaimed a stronghold right off our southern border. A number of northeastern governors in New England, their states beset by syndicalist militia violence, have asked our government to enact, yes, move into New England. Uh, seize New England. We just did it. We took New England. Who are these guys? Oh, the French dudes. Provisional government. 
uh, and we can play as them, not doing that. Military occupation, I don't think that's the answer. Set up a provisional government, but prepare to appoint a governor general, and we can play as New England. Set up a provisional government, prepare to appoint, okay, this one. Wait, once, yeah, the, wait, what's the difference between this one and this one? We're just gonna do this one, all right. Set up a provisional government, there we go, New England. There it is, beautiful. And we finally got one of our old colonies back of America. I think that was one of the colonies. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was Boston that we had. Anyway, I'm, I need to focus. But I was feeling pretty good. We are a, a monarch, monarchy of an empire that wields great nation power with big states. What am I talking about? Big states. Demand, join the Entente if you do that. Yeah, they do. Okay, cool. There was a crisis and they, they agreed. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're there. Can we, can we go into this one, please? Let's do the one that gives us stability. A more heavy-handed approach. I need stability. There we go. Done! I took it. Cool. There we go. That was a lot more annoying than I thought it would be. Okay, we got rail expansion, civilian, civilian, and military. Where's the rail expansion one? Is that that one? I don't know. Anyway, let's just do it. All of them. <laughs> now, what am I going to do about the American Civil War, you might ask? Well, um, it's complete chaos, and I had no idea who I should have been supporting. Like, absolutely no idea. So, uh, well, I kind of, like, the people I wanted to support originally just died instantly, so not much of supporting them. I, you'll see. Who would we support? The Western Command Center? Oh, we would, yeah. Western Command Center is, like... Our guys. They don't look too good. Oh no, they don't look good at all. Canada, okay. The fate of the royal prerogatives. Placate the Canadians. Once Britain is free, so shall Canada, Canada be freed. Or Canada is a failed project. Long live the empire. The exile government moves 20% towards the side of Canada. Um, you know what? Fine. Once Britain is free, Canada can actually be free as well. Ah, uh, I don't know though. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Canada. No, we're doing it, we're doing this. How good is that? The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Canada. Here we are. Dude, I was gonna be like, they can be free, but no, this is much cooler. This is way better. Now we are officially the United Kingdom. You can see the Union Jack in the top left hand corner. We will be coming home. That is a statement towards the syndicalists over in our homeland. We are coming back. Oh, intervention debate. Okay. How are we planning on intervening? Parliament has begun. Okay, I don't need to read that. We all know what we're doing. Um, we can not get involved. We get stability and political power. You know, this might be the way to go. Considering the guys that we'd be supporting are losing. The federal government, of course. Pacific States, Huey Long. Now, at the time, I did not think that this would be this much of big of a decision. I thought it would just be click a button and support them a little bit. Maybe they'd have a higher chance of winning the war. But no, if we'll, the person we click to support, the other countries are like outraged and completely dislike us. So there's that. I think the one that I think the Union State, maybe just because they're the ones that are say, Pacific States hate us. And these guys hate us and we're not supporting the communists and we're not supporting these guys. Oh, they are paternal autocrats. Why can't we support them? I mean, I, I know it's bad supporting these guys, but come on. I mean, we're the same ruling ruling party. <laughs> um, I think we're gonna go Huey Long. That's the one that seems like the best. Yes. We support in the American Union state. And that is a decision that I'm going to be sure to regret. I, I mean, you'll see what happens if you keep watching the video, <laughs> it's not good. Apparently, Huey Long's America and the Syndicalists are not at war with each other. They don't, they don't, I, I didn't know this. So when I went to support the Union State, I thought I'd be going to war with the Syndicalists and it'll be, all be okay, but no, no. If I wanted to be at war with the Syndicalists, I would have had to join the Pacific States, but I didn't know that at the time. So I was uh, very in, unintelligent, very dumb. So I'm gonna bring these guys and try and attack here. If the Pacific States are kind of strong. I think attacking them will be a good idea, but we need somewhere that we need somewhere there isn't many mountains. Unfortunately, this is the region of America where there is infinite mountains, so. Oh, it's gonna be some trouble, I guess. We'll try here or something. American refugees. The irony. Southern Ontario, local supplies. 
Oh, so we got refugees now. Okay, we can intervene. Uh, joins American Union State in their war against the United States of America. Against the Pacific States. Oh, we can fully just declare war. Shouldn't we just go in on the side of New England then? So I was a bit confused here because would I wouldn't I want New England on to be in control of America? So why would I fight on the side of the new of the American Union state? I don't know. It just didn't make much sense to me. And I mean, there's no way they'd be able to handle us invading as well. Do we want the American Union state? I think so. I mean, what other option is there? They hate us. We're definitely not siding with them, and they despise us. Why do they despise us? They're just outraged. Because we sided with these guys. And, but they're authoritarian Democrats, so we're they're closer. They're, so these guys are closer in ideology. Um, so we'll see what happens. But if we could just give this all to New England, I mean, I would. <laughs> I mean, I would. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no to that. And so there I was, about to declare war on the Pacific States of America, the United States of America, and the racist America. And this would be the biggest mistake of my life. Intervene now. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. All right, perfect. Intervene in the Civil War. Oh, it takes 30 days. Hang on. <laughs> I'll see you guys in 30 days. Royal Address to the Entente. <clears throat> oh, Canada intervenes. There we are. Okay, we're at war. Okay, let's slow everything down. I don't want to go too quickly. What is this new decision? Enact full conscription. No, I do not need that. I'm not reinforcing because we are going to be walking into countries. So, Oh, it appears that they uh, have divisions on the borders. Okay, well, we're still going to walk in. What is home rule? Fine, we'll agree it. I don't know what that means. They are still a puppet. I guess maybe once the American Civil War finishes, they take control. But then we're, how does what happens to the American Union state? I don't know. It's very confusing. All this is very confusing. What I should have done was sided with the Pacific States of America. That way we could get rid of the American Union state, get rid of the syndicalists, and then have New England on everywhere except the Pacific Coast where we had the Pacific States of America. And then it would be kind of like shared and everyone would be happy and there'll be no issues. But no, I had to go down this. And well, as a lot of people like to say, it is what it is and we can't change the past. So now I had to figure out how I was going to survive because the Pacific States of America were very strong. How is that losing? What is this division made out of? Keep on moving. And yeah, the ASU is pushing against them. So maybe it's just like hold these guys barely and then take out these guys and these guys and then we move in. That might have to be the move. Okay, we finished that. God save the empire. A cynic would say that our empire died on the day of the revolution. A cynic would say that the exiled would never hear the power of the peel of Big Ben again. Despite our dire straits, we have proven that the empire's story isn't over. Nay, it is only beginning. The empire shall breathe once more and be even more powerful and glorious to the one we have lost. Now, I wanted to get forces from New England. Unfortunately, they are no longer a puppet, so we could not request any forces. And bear with me, it's like 6 a.m. right now. I had to wake up early to do this video. See, I can't request forces, which sucks. Oh, they're no longer a puppet, yeah. Now they're no longer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. All right, whatever. No template, amphibious, yeah, well, it will soon, okay, so. Should've just not, not got involved in this war, to be honest. But to be fair, it's better to be involved in it than have like an enemy in our, an American enemy, a unified enemy of America on our border. That would have been disastrous, so. How many troops are there? 28 to 77. Like, this is 216. This is, come on. Like, these guys have so many more. The fall of New York City. Yes. New England. That's what I'm talking about. That's got to be, when is America, uh, the, the uh, USA. Oh. They've still got like Washington though. That's their problem. All right, and these guys aren't at war with the syndicalists, so you know that's definitely going to be a war. Oh my gosh, Iceland went socialist or syndicalist, so yeah. However, Iceland going syndicalist wasn't all bad news because th this gives us justification to just invade Iceland, right? I mean, we invade Iceland, that gives us a launching platform back into our home country. So I don't know why I was upset, but uh, it's some good news. Whoa, 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 whoa. There it is, the second book. That's early. That's 1939 instead of 1940. Okay. Well, the Second World War just started. The, Communi the Third International is at war with uh, Germany now. We gotta do something. We gotta invade Britain eventually. Yep. Oh, the Kingdom of France just declared war on the Commune. 
Okay, so our ally is at war against against Britain. Oh, that's gonna be. You know, yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna wait till America's dealt with before I do that anything. Okay, I'm gonna yes, wait before America's done. I can't just be throwing myself at war left, right, and center. So now I was left in a bit of a difficult situation. Do I continue defending my borders or, or attacking America, or do I try and do, do I join the the French in taking back our homelands? I, I didn't know what to do. Government urge to attack. United Kingdom declares war on the Union of Britain. We'll attack when we're ready, no sooner. Yeah. Let's attack when we're ready. Not right now. Not right now. Oh, Constitutional America capitulated. Good. Perfect. Right, that's just what we needed. Now all of the divisions from the ASU can come over and actually help out. We are 1940. I just realized. Oh, never mind. I didn't realize anything. But uh, oh, Russia is at war. Well, the Socialist Republic of Russia is at war with Ukraine. But nothing else. <laughs> it's like real life. I wonder how that's going. I actually haven't heard a lot of news about this uh, Russian-Ukraine war going on in real life right now. Everything's <laughs> been invisible there since the start of the war. Here, yeah, there's so many wars going on, man. We are so screwed as a society, man. Everybody, we're gonna get drafted. Next setup is gonna be here. It's gonna be a war over here now. The end. Yep, that'll be the end of the USA. Beautiful, okay. Now we got no points, so we'll just let them do that. Confirm an exit, okay. New England actually has that little bit here, which is pretty cool. All right, now, the only people we're at war, is, war with is the PSA. And for some reason, we're we're, we're working with these guys. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Maybe I should have allied with the PSA. I don't know, but... Uh, Let's just take him out. I've made my decision. Can't change it now, so. Call to arms. Yeah, they want me to go to war with the Third International. Which, chill, hang on. There's an American thing going on. I don't want to go to war with Third International and suddenly these guys join it. And then we're, we're dead. Like, literally. We have. How many forces? They have 13. Why am I not using them? Who are they? Are they at war with someone? No, they're not at war. They're not, they're not at war with anyone. Alright, come here. The West Indies Army, alright, that's what we're gonna call it. The tribes break free of the Germans. Africa has broken the chains, yep. There it is, and now they're all at war with each other. <laughs> that sounds... I don't think they're break... I don't think they're free of... <laughs> that doesn't look very free to me. They're all just at constant war, okay. Called arms, Panama. What's who's Panama at war with? Colombia. Alright, you know what, you can deal with that, Panama. Look, you just have to defend one province is easy. Now, in the past, we asked Denmark to give us Greenland because, you know, if we, we could have Greenland, I mean, that'd be great to be able to get back our homeland. Unfortunately, they reject us, but that doesn't really matter because if they, we, we still can invade Iceland, so it, it, it's fine. We alone have about the same amount of divisions they do. So all these ASU, all these AUS units just should be overpowering. They should be, but they're not. And I was really thinking I should have allied with the PSA because then the AUS would be gone and the syndicalists we could take and New England would help take the syndicalists and we'd all be happy and everything would be fine, but no. I should have just... And all in all, I should have just not gotten involved. I should have just seized New England and Alaska and just left it at that. I don't know what I was doing. I just... Focus. Oh, we got supremacy. Oh, they're going. They're going with that naval invasion. All right, brilliant. I think because we just, yeah, oh, we took out their pride of the fleet. We took out with our eight destroyers. No way. Okay, here we go. British naval supremacy. Our destroyers will sink, but we'll sink capital ships. That's what happens. That's what happens out here. The Royal Navy is unstoppable. No. Dude, they've got their proper, they have more. They have a bigger fleet than I thought. Hmm. And I thought, okay, so if my divisions were getting pushed back by the Pacific States of America divisions and they're pushing back the ASU units, I would need to make my divisions better instead of making more of them. So I try to make them better. Infantry. 29. 31. 31 is not bad, right? 33. What if I add another artillery? 36. 34. 32. You know what? 32 is good. This is good. I'll keep that division. Now, we're going to be down a lot of artillery and... That is why I'm going to pull back on these and just everything in artillery, even planes I'm going to pull back on. You know, more, on a, more on artillery, please. You know, sometimes I'm a bit of an idiot and just have a look at this clip. There is a there is an event saying that Central America wants to join the Entente, but I thought it was talking about Central America as in United States of America, but no, it was talking about continental U U Central America. I was so confused. 
Central America West requests to join the Entente. Central American Confederation? What's the Central American Confederation? What? What is that? Who is the cent- is the, this is the American Union state? Maybe I- oh. No, we're, we're not gonna- we're not gonna allow it. Here we are, 1941. Still- still trying to deal with this. It, the front line has not changed. The only thing is different is we're about to go to war with Third International now, so... That's not good. Well, yep, there we did it. We just declared war. Okay, all hands on deck. Recruitable population factor 2%. Yes, I'm taking that. Okay. How are we? We gotta get to them somehow. We gotta get to them somehow. Uh, we should be able to still do the Isle of Man thing that I was talking about. Yeah. Paralyzed? Well, yeah. We know, oh, we need to be at peace with the Union of Britain? Oh, we can't seize the Isle of Man now. Because we need to be at peace with them. You're joking. Oh, well. <laughs> the Entente is moving to reclaim Europe. France declared we're in the Union of Britain. Coming to France. Wait, what? Oh, the joined. Okay, I was, was going to say, <laughs> it's a bit odd. Yep. Actually, I'm just going to accept everything here. I'm going to accept it all. There we go. I don't know what I just accepted. A bunch of stuff. Um, because that's more recruitable population. Enemy. Uh, uh, Iceland is now our enemy. We could probably take Iceland. And by accepting all of those things, I made a big mistake. Well, one, I was at war with Iceland now, which wasn't a big deal because they're a good launching platform to our homeland. But now we would be at war with the American Union state as well, not just the Pacific states. Oh. New England just what? New England is at war with the American Union state? Uh-oh. Dude, this is going to be hard. This is going to be very difficult. We went from struggling to being at war with the Pacific states to now being at war with the the entirety of the Third International, the American Union state, and the Pacific states. And I, I, <laughs> I was very scared. Iceland now. Off we go. We're invading Iceland. That should be pretty easy with all of our Marines there. Let's go. There we go. Brilliant. All right. All the Marines here, and let's just take the... Island of Iceland. Wait, I'm at war with the... Oh, I'm at war with these guys now. Oops, 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 oops. Oh, that's a big mistake. Now, we were in a very precarious position, but strapped down because you are about to witness why Great Britain is going to be the world-leading superpower in this game, hopefully. Uh, hopefully. Oh, there we go. Iceland capitulated. We actually got some guns from them. Perfect. Okay, deal with the Admiral. No, 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 no. Polymer. Oh, we need, we need, we need fuel. Okay, okay, we got rid of Iceland. Perfect. These guys can just be stationed here. Yeah, we'll let them capture that first and we've got area defense. Why is this disconnected from supply? Oh! Dude, that is really, really bad. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we have to go around. Now here, I only just realized how fragile our supply line is. One railroad cut off leads to the entirety of supply deficit in the whole western side of Canada. The only way we could get supply would be through the port of Vancouver, which goes directly through the Pacific States of American Navy. And we could try and take them out, but I didn't want to risk destroying my navy before invading England, so I was, I was at a loss. We're getting pushed back hard, man. Why are all of these dudes in one tile? What is going on? Why are they all in one tile? Are you seeing this? Why is everyone always on strategic redeployment? It's so annoying. Like, they just lose all their organization as soon as they start moving. What just happened? These guys took so long to retreat. Oh my gosh, man. What? What? 
How is that fair? How is that fair at all? This is the only state we can even think to take back. How do they have supply up there? How? When we, we never have supply up there. It's our own bloody country. It's taking so long to move, man. If, if I was in their position, I would be full on sprinting out of that situation. But no, they're just going to have the nice Sunday stroll out of, a, in, out of an encirclement. Nice Sunday stroll. To, yeah, why don't you? Why? Oh my god, man. My condolences for the uh, loud audio that you guys are experiencing right now. I was uh, not a happy man, I'll tell you that. Yep, yeah, they all died. Cool, well done. Sick. <laughs> Congratulations. Look at this, can't even take that. Do you know how much supply? Look how much they got! Zero supply! Zip. Not supply, organization. They got zero organization. We still can't take this goddamn province. And so there I was at the end of 1941 in maybe the worst position I have been in in this entire game. But I was not ready to give up all of the work and hours I had put into this game already. I was like, what, 1942 now? <laughs> I'm not restarting, all right? We're, we're going through this thing. So I, I guess I just didn't give up. Then I had a breakthrough. I had just recaptured one of my supply hubs. That one province I was yelling about, well, that was a supply hub. That's why I was so angry that I couldn't take it, but then I could take it. So now I've got it. And all of the troops above that line that are theirs are out of supply. Hang on, things might be, things might be okay. If we could close that, we get a small encirclement. That'll make up for at least something. The, cover the supply hub. Isn't that a given? Is that not a given? Apparently not. I want to just close an encirclement. Like, if we get an encirclement, that's, like, overwhelmingly a win. What if we go here and just attack that? At least that will be all those. That's a lot still. Oh! we got to do this once we, uh... Yeah, okay, well, I didn't see that, that part of the focus tree. Okay, well, uh, we got to take out. I think we have to get back our homeland before we even deal with that. There we go. Finally! Oh my gosh. All right, let's just... No, 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 no. You guys are attacking up here. And then I did it. I couldn't believe it. I know I don't sound particularly enthused at the time, but I was tired, okay? I've, they, uh, by this point, I was playing... I've been playing the game for a long time, so I'm so tired. But this this was huge. The turning point. This, uh, the turning point of the Pacific War. Okay, let him get out. Let this man pass. He's walking into a trap. Well, how many... Casualties of the PSA. We've taken more than the PSA, but we're about to inflict some devastating losses onto them right now. I mean, these lost, lost, lost these numbers, man. Maybe I reduce my army on this border, and I think about taking back Britain now, because these guys are just going to hash it out, right? Like, just let them do that at, the, at this point. And so I had a series of options for. Oh, what's the play here? Do we push, or do we think about taking back our country now, our home? and returning. How many divisions of the Union have Britain got? 164. But they're probably, are they gonna all be in France? Surely they'll all be in France. What is the play here? Oh my gosh. What would you guys do? Let me know in the comments what you guys would do in this situation. Would you try and take out America now? Or would you try and fix our, get back our country? and let these two fight, the Union and the Pacific. And then we gotta worry about, these guys are a complete wild card. Like, what do we even do about these? They could just declare war on us at any point. They could join the Third International and just destroy us. Well, not destroy us, but we'd be having a, a very tough time. How many divisions have New England got? 63, that's that's considerable, that's considerable. That's respectable, respectable. I came to the decision that I would go and take back my homeland. I was gonna hold the line with America, let U American Union State and the Pacific States fight it out and wear each other down while I go strong, get stronger and take back my homeland. Taking back all those factories, getting a bunch of manpower, I think it would all be perfect. I think the invasion is ready to go. Oh, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, man. I don't wanna screw this up. A lot of time and effort has gone into this game. I really don't want to screw anything of it, screw any of it up. Boom, boom. It's off. There they go. Our boys, we're coming home. Okay. Yes, one is landing. Yep, this is our, our proper one, right? Yeah, that's our that's our actual divisions meant for NATO. Oh, dude, they're getting dudes there. 
Um, Liverpool could work, and then hopefully I've only got two divisions in there, so it's kind of like a distraction. Began to request aid. No. Oh god, it's not looking good. The first invasion might fail. These guys are definitely not going to work. All right, let's just stop that one immediately. That's not working, and okay, this is our last hope. Now, if there was one naval invasion that was going to work, it would have to be this one. I, I had decked out this naval invasion. I had amphibious tanks. I had decked out marines. I had the craziest division templates just for this one. I know there's only seven divisions on this, but it had to work, and I put all my faith into it. Oh my gosh, no way. No way that happened. There's no chance. Okay, we're, we're back on homeland. They're getting a bunch of debuffs now because we're on homeland. These guys continue the uh, naval bombardment, etc, etc. Can we get an airbase? Where's an airbase? Where can we get an airbase around here? We should know. Why do we not know our own country? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Why do we not know where all the stuff is? If this was our country like 20 years ago, not even 20, before. Dude, how do we not know where the airbases are? We should. We literally, oh my gosh, man, this is crazy. That's that's just that's just disgusting. We should we should know where these airbases are, man. I mean, now landing was the easy part. The next part was able to hold the port for se with only seven divisions by while getting constantly attacked and not regaining organization. Now that was the hard part, and I I was like worried a couple of times that this wasn't gonna work. I'm just getting constantly attacked, man. What am I gonna do? It's landed and they've got no organization. Just regain the organization. Look at this, it's ridiculous. As you could see, our divisions were literally dying. I mean, you could see them literally dying there, but we, we were saved. Fortunately, the British loyalists rose up and decided it was time to fight for our homeland. Born in Northern Lanark. Beautiful stuff right there. Beautiful stuff. Okay. British loyalists, we're gonna give them heart because they're great. And we're gonna give them uh, this dude, this mountaineer. Or a hills fighter, or whatever it is. Okay, put him in here. Right, okay, these guys should just automatically gain land. There we go, take Glasgow. Okay, we're taking Glasgow. Let's get. Alright, uh, well, most of our dudes still in the port. It's very important, most of our dudes are still in the port. Done. Done, 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 done. Alright, everyone here, and then just a few guys. Just so, take care of that. The loyalists who had bravely rose up finally united with the actual armed forces and we would cut off Scotland from the rest of England and push upwards and then down into London. Eventually, hopefully, the plan was to, you know, capitulate them and hang them all because they're awful people. Nineteen forty three. Oh yes, that's right. We're taking back our land in uh, Britain and well. America, but we're sitting in America. We're waiting for them to, uh, you know. Oh, why have we got two separate? It's a bit, it's a bit odd. You know, let's let's fix that real quick. Can we delete that, please? Yes. We have the edge over Britain, taking them out, obviously. The other half of the third international, France, is being taken out by Germany as well, because Paris is uh, just about to fall. We're going to take out Britain, so the third international will be done, and there'll be no threat of the syndicalists in America joining the third international, because that would be a problem. Oh yeah, and Italy aren't a major though, are they? Nah, yeah, so it's all good. The fall of Paris. Uh-oh, I hope there isn't some, I hope they don't go like, peace with honor, or some absolute BS, and then I lose my land. Don't do anything dumb. And as I was wiping out the syndicalists, America was starting to become a bit of a problem again, but hopefully they wouldn't be too bad this time. Ooh, what is America doing? Once we reconquer our land, we're going to be a whole lot more powerful. Surely our divisions just become OP, right? That's how that works, right? We become eternally great. All of these divisions. The entirety of the Third International is here. We got, we got British, we got French, we got... I mean, that's pretty much the entirety of the Third International already, so... This is good. Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. This is how I imagined everything would go. Beautiful. And as our amphibious tanks and our marines and our normal army rolls and our British army rolls into northern England, it seems that the surrender limit for the for the current uh, the current government is not as strong as we thought it'd be. Considering we are the loyalists, it's a lot easier to take back. So they capitulate real soon. There it is. We can do it. 
Return of the King, London is now back in our hands, the capital and very heart of the British Empire. At long last, we can restore the United Kingdom and the monarchy gets event our homeland reclaimed. Beautiful. Okay, we still we're not out of the not out of the woods yet though. We still got uh, issues with another another country. Wait, wait. Return of the King, our homeland reclaimed. After a long and brutal conflict, we have done it at last. The body of George V, having laid in the state in Ottawa since his death, has been moved to the royal vault in Windsor Castle. Although rebuilding has already begun the earnest in earnest, much still remains to be done. After all, restoring the greatest country in the world to its former glory, well, that takes time, even for the exiles. God save the king. Look at all these bonuses. Whoa. Uh, add post-war devastation. Add legacy of revolution. Add army and chaos. Army and chaos? No. What? What are you talking about? We should be getting bonuses of that. Remove post-war devastation. Suddenly our army is in chaos. What are you talking about? You mean like we just took back our homeland? What do you, our army should be invincible. It should feel invincible anyway. But this would be a big problem for America, for us. Not for America, for us fighting in America. Because now our capital is in London. Supply is even more strained on the Canadian border. See now, Ottawa is in our capital, so supply is so much more strained as well here. Dude, take, keeping Canada is gonna be so much harder now, apparently. Oh, uh, the organization has gone down. The British Empire returns to the Isles. There it is. Quote of the day. I look up upon it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Just don't read anything, do I? I'm so lazy, man. Oh, the French kingdom, man. The French are still not in charge of their homeland, but I'm not gone. Maybe we'll go to war with Germany. But I don't know. We got what we want. We got everything we need. We'll see. Germany strikes east. Again, they're striking a Soviet, a Soviet republic. Poland just... Poland joining? Probably. They got Finland as well. Ooh. So now Germany had started a war with Russia and I was at war with America and I found that quite fitting. The United Kingdom was reborn when the Canadian government rolled in with Britain. Now with London and our hands up, the mighty British Empire controls its sacred homeland. The king once more holds an empire spanning across the mighty Atlantic. Beautiful. And good, uh, good bonuses there. Encirclement, please. Yeah, encirclement. Yeah, let's go. Now we have the advantage over America. Well, the Pacific states anyway. The American Union state is still pretty strong, but they're getting pushed back by the Pacific. I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm just trying to get at least some land and help New England in some form whatsoever. Sacred guy, try the try the syndicalists. Or try a trial, yes. Yeah, straight away. Put them to trial. Execute them all. What you thought the Union of Britain have begun to... Oh, some still injured. They'll receive limited help, I know. They were only told as they, they were only doing as they were told, give them full support. Oh my gosh, you know what, we're not going to support traders. <laughs> Dude, that's so mean. And as 1944 comes into fruition, we we're going to stop looking at the past and taking back our land and start looking forwards into the future and building our empire again. There we go, returning aristocracy. Full of Gibraltar. Okay, uh, the British exiles who have leave, blah, blah, blah. What should the, what was theirs should be restored? Lose a bit of stability. Current owners should be compensated, but must still give it up. The aristocracy will be compensated for their losses. Um, that one, I guess. I don't know, it can't be that important. Imperial reintegration. Remove Canadian resistance. Thank you, get rid of that. Oh, and by the way, while we're waiting, I want to give you guys an update on the future plans for this channel. Uh, I was talking about doing a choose your own adventure thing. Just have a listen. You know, I plan on doing a video where it's like choose your own adventure game. Or like a choose your own adventure video where it's like, it's a long video or it's multiple videos where I play as one nation and then you choose what I go down. So let's say I was playing like Iran, right? And you've got like all this focus. Oh, hang on, we'll make it, say I was playing like Russia. Oh wait, no, they've changed their focus tree. Uh, but yeah, but like you would get every time there'd be a mutually exclusive decision or an important event, you would choose and that would take you to a different part of the same video or a different video. And then essentially like the ho all the paths would be played into one video, into one like playthrough, but it would be like multiple playthroughs that I do. You, you, hard to explain, but I was thinking of doing something like that, it would be pretty cool. Here, let me explain it better. You know those choose your own adventure books when you have a decision and it says if you decide to do this, flip to page 24, and if you decide to do that, flip to page 58. Basically that, but with YouTube timestamps. And then I play as one country, and then your decisions, whether you want, to go, want me to go communist, fascist, nationalist, whatever you want me to do. And then you guys, 
decide the fate of the the thing and you get different endings and stuff all in one video I mean it'll be a long video to make and it'll be difficult, but I, I think it'll be very cool There we go Britannia rules again. We can remove army in chaos and uh, Yes, glorious than ever before beautiful Because we will have authority over America. Hopefully Imperial Federation proposal. Oh The rising Sun never sets Oh my gosh, securing our jewel? Dude, we got so much more! We got so much more to do! This is so good! Germany? Oh my gosh! Now, uh, this, now this is why we play Kaiser Redux. Because now, we look at this, we still got more. Beautiful. And here we are, at the end of part one, we had finally secured our homeland and authority over the British people with our monarchy. And now we would look towards the future. Towards rebuilding our empire once again, starting with our closest neighbour. We would start with Ireland. All that in part two. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.